guys, it's Sandro here. In today's video, we'll be installing the Yoshimura RS3 full exhaust system for the new Honda Monkey, as well as doing some all important sound, look, and weight comparisons to the original exhaust. Now, I actually love the look of the OEM exhaust, and it actually sounds pretty good from the factory, though a little on the quiet side. And I debated immensely whether I should get a straight pipe to delete the heavy and monstrous twisting header pipe or even just a better flow full exhaust system that fits into the original OEM heat shield so that it all looks stock. But as much as I tried to talk myself into it, the heart knows what it wants. And for me, the Yoshimura RS3 full exhaust system, which was actually one of the first developed for the new Honda Monkey, is still arguably one of the best looking, sounding and performing exhausts out there for the Monkey. Now just before I remove the original exhaust, I want to let you guys hear the sound of the stock exhaust and also take a couple of decibel readings both at idle revs with the engine warmed up and then taking another reading with the engine revving at full throttle. And I'll then compare it to the RS3 exhaust once it's installed and running. So let's get to it by removing the original exhaust. You want to start by removing the heat shield in which you'll need a 5mm hex allen key to break and screw off the two allen screws holding the plastic cap. All the screws, nuts and bolts on both the OEM and Yoshimura exhausts are in standard thread directions so you'll be turning them in a counterclockwise direction to remove them and then for the installation of the new exhaust you'll be screwing them in in a clockwise direction to secure them in. Then remove the allen screw on the side that holds the heat shield in place and then simply slide the plate towards the rear of the bike and it'll snap out of its holding brackets and should come off quite easily. You'll then need a 12mm socket and wrench to break and loosen the two bolts holding the muffler but just screw them out halfway and leave them in place. Then underneath the center of the exhaust, do the same for the mounting bolt and just screw it halfway loose. Finally are the two exhaust header nuts that once again you'll just break the nut tension and screw them down halfway. At this point you're simply going to go from the lowest position bolts and nuts to the highest. One by one fully unscrew and remove them and once you get to the last couple of bolts, just support the exhaust with one hand so it doesn't fall as you remove the last bolt and it will easily come away from the bike. It's really as quick and easy as that and it shouldn't take more than 5 or so minutes to remove. So I was really curious as to how much the OEM exhaust weighs and it was a staggering 4.4 kilograms and if you add the heat shield it's well over 5 kilos so actually quite a hefty weight for what it is. Now a shout out and thank you goes out to the guys at Man in the Box for their great service and support and I'll have a link to them and the exhaust in the description box. We got a few Man in the Box stickers and some flyers to what looks like a great event that they're hosting next year if you're in the States. Which unfortunately I'm in Australia so a little far for me to travel there guys. We have the RS3 header pipe which looks very clean and honestly weighs next to nothing so it's super lightweight which is great. We then have the main component of this setup which is the slip on muffler which again is on the lighter side compared to the stock one and really is a beautiful piece of art with great attention to detail. There is a couple of finger marks on it but I'm going to clean up the whole exhaust after it's all installed. 
There's a nice set of clear instructions for both the removal of the OEM exhaust and the installation of the new one. A couple of Yoshi small ball life stickers. A very nice heat shield with a cool little monkey cutout. And the muffler mounting bracket and holding brace. Then there's a spring tensioner and pulley tool to install it, an air sensor delete plug and basically all the screws, nuts and bolts you're going to need for the installation. Now just before we install the new exhaust, it'll be worth doing a couple of things such as screwing in the air sensor delete cap and also lining up and fitting the rubber protector gasket for the muffler holding brace so you don't need to stop halfway through the installation to do these things. And you can also take note of the header pipe nut torque settings which are 27 newton meters or 24 pounds of torque. The first step is to screw the Y-shaped muffler mounting bracket and you can actually torque it right down and fully tighten the bolts. The next step is to mount the header pipe using the original OEM bolts. But just screw them in by hand for now so that you've still got a little movement and play in the pipe. I'll also quickly mention that this should be a gasket, but mine was nowhere to be seen. It wasn't stuck on the OEM pipe or in the manifold opening. But I've got my bike going in for its first service next week and I'll get them to check it out and fit a new one while it's been serviced. The next step is to slip the muffler onto the exhaust pipe and it really just goes on about an inch or so. And then slide the mounting holding brace over the muffler. You'll need a 6mm Allen key to fasten the Allen bolt that firstly goes into a large plastic washer. And then you'll need a 13mm spanner to hold the nut behind the mounting brace while you fully tighten the Allen bolt. You can then secure the tension spring with the supplied pulley that reinforces the connection from the muffler to the header pipe. The next step is to torque the header pipe nuts to 24 pounds of torque, but try to alternate from one nut to the next so that you get a nice even flush mount to the manifold. The final step is to mount the exhaust pipe heat shield in which you'll need a 3mm hex allen key and once again you can fully tighten the two screws down. Just before you fire up the engine, it'd be a good idea to give the full exhaust a wipe down with some cleaning alcohol so that any fingerprints don't get permanently etched into the finish once it fully heats up. And now to what everyone, including myself, was really waiting for, which is the Yoshimura sound.
I honestly couldn't stop smiling after I fired it up. And there's no other way to explain the sound other than it just sounds amazing and I just couldn't be happier. Now although the decibel rating on the Yoshimura exhaust was just 4 or 5 decibels higher than the OEM exhaust, I don't think that that's an accurate representation of just how much louder it really is. Because it does sound so much louder than the stock exhaust. I actually tried to get some decibel readings outside, but unfortunately the shop across the road does dyno tuning and they were revving out the cars all day so I just couldn't get any usable readings. Once I get the chance, I'll try and do a ride video and talk a little more about the exhaust, sound and how it's all performing. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.